guys. It's going really well. My name's Ricky Gervais. With me, Steve. Hello there. Carl. All right. All right. Coming up soon, White Van Man, White Van Carl. We ask Carl the questions that the son asked someone else. <laughs> exactly. This is a good feature. It's a great feature. I'll be testing Carl on the new, the, the new re-education of Carl, as you know. He got a GCSE. It's the last one, isn't it? It's in weak. history. It was the last heavy sort of one, yeah. No. It's uh, Winston Churchill. We, yeah, because we've got, we've got, we're going on to more sort of uh, metaphorical and metaphysical uh, sort of uh, pursuits, aren't we? Not that book. Yeah, that's the uh, Aesop's Fables. Can't read that in a week. You don't have to read oh, it. Right, just choose fine, out. Yeah. Just choose the ones about the foxes eating penguins. You'll like that. Steve, over to you. <laughs> Thanks very much. I wonder if I don't think we've uh, made much progress yet on uh, sending Carl into sort of uh, into the air with the. No, balloons. this has gone a bit ballistic. I've actually, gone off the idea. Uh, oh no, shut no, up! No, don't you? Go off the, 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 we've 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 inflamed the imagination of the capital. There's people offering left, right, and centre, and uh, I think it's a good idea. But I think we we should we should uh, you know make a day of it. I think we should send you up in some balloons, right? Maybe. Uh, you know. I well, could, hang on. I, I, let's, I before we go out, let's explain what happened because people might not have listened last week. I don't believe that. <laughs> there are one or two, Rick. I don't believe that. People who were Name ill, them. maybe out of the country. Okay. Um, yeah, so last week we discovered, was it that 623, uh, is it 6,000? No, I read that 6,000 balloons filled with helium can lift a bloke off the floor. I think that's too many. I think that's too many. I think we could do it for less, certainly. Well, anyway, you. listen, there are various <laughs> organisations which actually exist already that can provide this kind of entertainment, this kind of fun. I mean, I didn't realise there was a whole kind of market for this already, but apparently there Nor is. Nor did I, no. Incredible. Anyway, um, so we're going to try and track one of them down. We're going to see if they can they can uh, organise it so that you, Carl, can float into the air. We need to get you, what, is it at least 11 feet up? Yeah, if it's just... And I think it's certainly higher. I mean, I can't remember what the record is, but it's quite a long way. 11,000. 11,000 feet. Yeah, but I think they're all official. We're, I want to do it with, like, little <laughs> those little balloons you get for a quid at the zoo or I don't somewhere. think that can be right, health and safety-wise. I don't think that can be healthy. I, just, I, I, I think as we, if we get him to sign some up, which I will... Okay. Uh, I think we'll cover It'll ourselves. But, yeah, certainly we're thinking of maybe making it a bit like, um, was it, is it Tea in the Park? The yeah. Uh, capital FM, uh, Yeah, event, the, you know, the big event. You can get sort of steps, at least H from steps can come down and yeah. host the event. I mean, uh, oh, oh, I don't mind, uh, comparing it. Steve's gonna do, uh, Steve's learning to sort of like scratch and mix and beat match and he's, I mean, you're getting pretty... I'm making a lot of progress, yeah. You're, 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 you are gonna be a turntablist. Uh, yeah. Um, uh, Steve never learnt an instrument, which he regrets, you know, and, uh, mm. you know, he's a modern lad and, uh, he's, uh, he's using t uh, turntables as his instrument. I just I got two turntables on the microphone, and so far, I mean, that's, seriously, I'm cutting out big style. <laughs> <laughs> no, don't don't laugh because it is mental. That's the kind of stuff I'm coming out with. And I'm scratching. I've got I've got the, the beats, you know, matching. Can you imagine that? Shut up! It's that, that, no, no, no. If, if look at the Chemical Brothers, for goodness' sake! If you're talking about freaks, look at those things. Man alive! <laughs> at least you cut your hair at Gavin. You know that the whatever it's called. Uh, they used to kind of at least faintly appear in their videos. The so yeah. this one is just some shots of like what you see from outside a train. I that know. is to them. That is more glamorous and exciting apparently than yeah. seeing the lads themselves in the video. Who do you think's cooler to look at, Steve or the Chemical Brothers? Steve. Definitely, yes. You're absolutely right, Carl. And that's the first sensible thing you've said if, for a long time. If I was time. to work with Steve on on some music, yeah. If I had the choice, I think Steve would look better on a album cover. Really? Yeah. What would you do? Would you change him at all? To, what would you do with his I'd, image? I'd put him in the distance so I... <laughs> I can't believe this is... This no, is just so him. you don't look as tall, that's doing you a favour. <laughs> you know, I was on the... This is true, I was on the, uh, uh. on the tube, right, coming in to meet Gervais the other day, and I was wearing a suit and I, my mobile phone slipped out of my pocket and it landed on the seat, and I didn't realise this, and as I was about to get off, some bloke who was sat there like an old guy, he picked up the phone and he went, Oi! Uh, lanky! You dropped your mobile phone! <laughs> <laughs> and I was like, well, I thank you for pointing out I dropped my phone, but did you have to do the lanky? But you knew he meant, I bet you turned round straight away. <laughs> it worked. You knew he meant, yeah, Steve. But he's done you again. But I was the only up. person stood up. It was a fairly empty train. Was, was there any other lanky people there? No. Well then. No, but my point was there was no one else at all who was about to exit the train. Okay, so he didn't need lanky. He could have gone, excuse me, sir, or oi you, anything, but oi lanky. I know. It's that thing though, isn't it? That's what I'm talking about. You say the thing that you don't want to say. It's like me with Ken Dodd and Will. I think he wanted to say this. Oh well. <laughs> I think he took pleasure in it. <laughs> I think he went, that bloke's lanky. I shouldn't say that. Yeah, I should. <laughs> Why lanky? What's he, he going to do? Phone. Yeah. Do you but want it, your phone back or not? But this balloon thing, anyway, I, I, it's got a bit out of hand. Why no. is it got out of hand? What are no, you doing? No, it's about? funny. I just want to. I want you know. You know I want to sort of like tie them all to the back of your belt. So as you go up there, you sort of tip forward <laughs> slightly, so yeah. you're going up slightly upside down. We could paint some advertising on your bald head. On your, yeah. Oh, that'd be great. Yeah, we'll do that, Lanky. <laughs> 
<laughs> oh, I mean, great. Here he comes. No, I mean, last week it was just a bit of fun about going like just lifting my feet off the ground. No, and that's a big difference to what it's got now. No, okay, what I tell you what, we will do a hundred feet in the air, and we and I'll hold on to the rope. But we'll do it at Wembley Arena. We'll sell tickets. <laughs> but it'll be for charity, Carl. No, it'll be for charity. Cool. No, we'll have lots of underprivileged kids coming along to see it's it. You just know, going out of hand. it's like, um, you know, I, I like karaoke, <laughs> but I wouldn't want to go on Stars in the Rise. Sure. And it's it's got out of hand. That's how it's sort of it's grown too big. I don't. Who like would you it. do if you were on Stars in the Rise? <laughs> I'd do that. Uh, Moby. Ja no, that Jack the Knife song. I love Jack that. the Knife. <laughs> Old Mac Heath. Uh, that one, yeah. yeah. Is it, Mac the Knife? That's what I do. <laughs> but which, who, which, which yeah, he'd, he'd do a hip hop version. <laughs> but which of the many singers would you impersonate? You can't. It's not the song, is it? It's, it's uh, the singer. You could do um, Jimmy Somerville, I think, quite well. Yeah, Somerville, you'd be uh, good at. Moby. Um, did Morph bring out a single? I don't think Morph did. Didn't he? No, I'm not sure. I'm sure didn't he have so. a theme tune? Did Morph phone in? If you think Morph. Morph didn't speak, Rick. Let didn't him he? sing. Morph hardly had any features. True. Right. Express 2 featuring David Byrne, Lazy, XFM 104.9, Quarter to 2, I'm Ricky Gervais, Steve's got the sun. Yes, I'm He's gonna, we're White just going to be doing Colin. White Van Carl, where we ask Carl the questions the sun asked some other bloke. That's right. Because okay. we think Carl's got more to say than anyone on That's anything. True. Carl only tells the truth, by the way. Just remember that, listeners. Off you go. Yes, um, well, today's white van man in the sun is John Slade. He owns his own door maintenance company. <laughs> um, his, uh, his answers are very informative, I have to say. But, Carl, what do you make of uh, the Channel 4 producer, aged 30, who duped a school into believing he was a teenager for a documentary? Are you familiar with this story? No, go on. Well, basically, a 30-year-old guy kind of fooled the school into, um, into thinking he was a pupil for a, a secret documentary. The school's outraged. Do you think that that's, uh, you know, any, for you, you know, should anything go when it comes well, to making TV? I think I've said to you before, um, there's loads of kids at my school. I remember being in the first year and kids who, what, did, what year do schools go up to? <laughs> I was in the first year. What, what is it? Eleven. Five. Oh, sorry. First year of infants and juniors. No, secondary school. Eleven. Right. Year eleven. Um, kids no. have beards and no, stuff. No, not year eleven. They're 11 when they first go to secondary no, school. No, right, well, I'm 11. The kid's at the, uh, at the older well, end. Well, there's a well, fifth form and then there's right. a you can leave when You, you can right. leave when you're 16, I think, can't you now? Right, well, kids who were 16 yeah. looked old. They, had, they, they did have beards. I remember going there and thinking some of them were teachers. I think he's answered that. Next one, what's the next <laughs> <Yep>. one? <laughs> Tattoos and everything. Um, I think uh, they're kids in the, in the earlier years, even. What do you make of the fact that Mariah Carey's £38 million payoff has cost EMI staff... Uh, their jobs, and we're talking 1,800 EMI staff who have lost their jobs. What do you think of that? Yeah, I mean... I mean, is that silly money, Mariah Carey, on 38 million? She doesn't need that much. She doesn't need that much. <laughs> she has to dress nice, though. It's not her fault. I'd say, um, <laughs> it's bad business. Okay. Because, uh, EMI, did you say? Yes. Right. They've got rid of them, them staff. Yeah. Mariah Carey's left. Who's going to do the work? <laughs> <laughs> do, you think, do you think Mariah should come back and do some temping? Well, they should have. They should have got a loan and paid her. Okay. Do you know what I mean, vicious circle that. <laughs> right. Have you have you done? You've done a business degree, only, have you? You did commerce. Yeah. What, where did you do that? What did you do that? In school. I'd, I'd learn how to fill out a check, <laughs> pay a bill, and uh, I think I, I had a trip round Kellogg's. <laughs> Did you, uh, did you get, a, <laughs> did you get an O level or did you see We know he didn't. You know. know. <laughs> but was, uh, was there a commerce exam or was it just a division of can't maths? Remember. What did he fill out a was check? It a subset of it maths. It was an option. It was like, if you want to do it, you can. What do it. was it? Fill, fill out, out a check, check fill pay, out a bill, check, pay a bill, pay a bill, have a visit right now. I went down Kellogg's and I saw my sister's boyfriend there at the time. He sorted me out with some variety packs. Really? What was in them? You know, Rice Krispies and. <laughs> Good stuff. Cocoa Pops? Space dust or whatever it is. Space <laughs> so, Sorry, that wasn't Ken Dodd, no. though. <laughs> that was someone else, wasn't it? That was an aunt. <laughs> that was, yeah. yeah. That wasn't special K. Oh, dear. Well, what about this, then? Home Secretary David Blunkett admits that muggers rule some streets. Um, weird, this. Because when I was out with you... I don't believe it's going to be weird, whatever you say, no, Carl. No, when, when we were in that pub that night and we got talking about muggers and that, 
The tip is, um, what I tend to do, because I nearly got mugged once. Act you mental. what? You nearly got mugged once. I nearly got mugged. Yeah. But I, but I tried this technique <laughs> of acting a bit mental. <laughs> right, and how did you act mental? Well, this guy wanted me trainers. And uh, I was in Piccadilly Gardens in Manchester. It was quite late one night. Mm -hmm. And he came up, he said, uh, I want them trainers. I said, you want them? I said, I worked hard for these. He said, how dare you come to me asking? And I, I got a bit livid. And I <laughs> He looked at he looked at me like oh my god he's got a right one here and he left me. Were you acting mental or were you just mental? No, I, I put it on a bit. Were you not tetra petrified though? Well, you don't think about it, do you, when you're sort of in the eyes of danger? <laughs> well, not you. Clearly, you're a brave man. So what did you say? <laughs> I, ju I just I just went I just went a bit mad. I just kind of because he said he wanted the trainers and they were dear ones at the time, and uh, I just no, you're not having these. So I've crafted. You, I said I wanted these trainers, yeah. and you know went on to tell him how I work out printers and I don't enjoy it, and you know I put in all these hours and that, and I have to cycle home for about five miles. And I, did he give you his trainers? <laughs> yeah. Did he have a knife? No, or I just think? left. No, it didn't get that. Didn't get that violent. Well, that's very brave of you, Carl. Yeah, it's that's good. good advice though. Just act mental. Um, uh, <laughs> See, what's actually tried it the other night? Oh, Liza Minnelli. Yeah. Well, she says oh, well, I've worked hard for these diamonds. Yeah. It's not easy being the daughter of Judy Garland. You don't know what it's like. Uh, finally, uh, apparently um, there was a crook that got a job, a security job at Heathrow. Right, he was a crook and he got a job at Heathrow. Uh, as robbers steal another two million pounds. Apparently security down there is lax. Yeah. Is that a concern for you? Is this another Yeah. two million? Yeah. Why, why is all this money at the airport? <laughs> Um, it's those sandwich shops. You know how they're really expensive, the sandwiches, in like when you're yeah. on a plane? They're like £2.50 <coughs> for tuna, which is ludicrous. Yeah. That's basically the reason. What do you mean, why is all this money at airports? What What is it doing there? Why is have it a go, just... have a go. No, have a go answering this yourself. Why is anything at an airport? It's going somewhere. Or coming in from somewhere. Yeah, but money, you can sort it out through the bank, like phone banks and that. Have you done commerce? You know a lot about... Paying bills and writing out checks. Yeah. <laughs> Tell us about Kellogg's. What was uh, it like? What, what was in the factory? Was it just like squashing bits of corn? It's and pretty boring, really. Just loads of conveyor belts, um, yeah. boxes of cornflakes everywhere. Just what you imagine. Yeah. I so was it more, this is where you it. might be working? <laughs> this is where you're likely to work? Possibly. There was two trips. There was that and the trip to Manchester Evening News. Okay. And I, I left that early because I had a job in... Um, Cordon Bleu. In Kellogg's. <laughs> Cordon Bleu, what's that? It's like that... a supermarket. Yeah? And I, I had to leave the trip early and the teacher went mad saying uh, they thought I'd got lost on the, you know, in the building and stuff. What, you didn't tell anyone? Up, or... No, because I w it was like day two of working in this supermarket and I couldn't be late. I thought by the time I explain where I've got to go and everything, it'll, I'll be even later. Sure. So I just left and then apparently they were searching the building and everything for me. How old were you? stuck in a printer. Um... <laughs> Don't know. <laughs> Fucking a printer! I don't know. Don't what was the printer's name? <laughs> <laughs> you worked at a supermarket called Cordon Bleu. Yeah. Cordon that Bleu! That's brilliant. Yeah. That's great, isn't it? It's rubbish. Oh. I got sacked. You had to what, what did you get sacked for? for? Messing about in a, um, the, back in the, in the car park around the back. Yeah. Right, there was, there was a grid and, uh, all the concrete had gone funny, so when it rained you got like a big lake. Oh yeah. Right? And I got in, do you know those big metal trolleys you get to like put all the food in while she's Oh yeah. And yeah. I got in one of them and pushed myself out into this lake. Of cement? No, of I, water. it was full oh, of was water because it had right, been raining. Right, right. And I got stuck in the middle, right? And the boss was like, where's, where's Carl? He's meant to be doing, you know, facing up the beans. And I was like, <laughs> okay, you were so, stranded in a lake. So someone said, oh, you, like, I saw him messing about out the back. He came out and saw me stuck in the middle of this. <laughs> <laughs> lake in like a, in a trolley and he said get back in I said, would you say no I'm, I'm, I'm said, filming sharks I said I'm, I'm, it's too deep I can't get out you'll have to pass me something and he said I'm not passing you nothing he said you can get out of there and walk through it I said I'm not I've got my trainers on probably the same ones yeah you've actually. risked your life for them yeah I said I'm not getting these wet I said, I, I said what are you going to do I said I'm going to wait for the water to go down the grid he said the grid's blocked now get out or you're sacked I said well I'm not getting out He's right, you sacked. So, so you were sacked. How long did you have to wait for the water to go down the grid? In the end, I did get bored, and I sort of did a bit of a leap and a jump and got one foot wet. Uh, uh, how long were you waiting? Only about half an hour. <laughs> just think of it. <laughs> just think. I mean, how did he get himself into that situation? 
<laughs> That's fantastic. Should we play a record? Oh, definitely, definitely. That's a joy. Oh, you're an absolute pleasure. More White Van Man next time on the show. Uh, Electric Soft Parade. I keep trying to get the album for free from you, Carl. You've not sorted me out yet. I have to rely on other people to give me uh, different copies. No, of I did try. Tracks. I'll keep trying. Please do. This is one called There's a Silence. Electric Soft Parade. <laughs> Um, <laughs> Gomez and Shot Shot on XFM 101.9. Uh, sorry, um, I was going to tell Steve something. Um, talk amongst yourselves. When you were out there, um, Johnny Mango phoned up and said to Carl, come on, when are we going to do this thing? And Carl got all nervous. Right, and uh, uh, he went, y- you don't want to do it, do you? He went, he said, well, I just, it's going to get out of hand. I just wanted to go as high as a tree. And uh, he went, well, you can. We just I'll hold you down with a rope. He went, yeah, but he said, but when the crowd are there and they're all screaming higher, higher, I feel the pressure and I have to go along with it. <laughs> <laughs> what crowd? <laughs> <laughs> what crowd is this? <laughs> higher. No, higher. We don't live in a, like, a medieval era. <laughs> <laughs> it's not going to be dancing bears and tumbling midgets. Well, I don't know, oh, that's an well, idea. Hold on, uh, if there's anyone got any of those... Tumbling midgets would be amazing. Yeah. Definitely. Less balloons, cheaper to do. Oh, you're going no, up, you're going going up with them. No, you're going up with them. No, you're going up with not just... With a midget under either arm. <laughs> brilliant. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Oh, it's time for your uh, the re-education of Carl Pilkington. Uh, this week, Carl was studying uh, the life and times of Winston Churchill. Um, what did you make of it, Carl? What, 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 what did Churchill do for right, you? La- well, last week I made a bit of an error with Hitler. Yeah, you Go didn't on, right. to remember too much and it just, it was way too much for me. Sure. So what I've done this week, sort of flicked through, got a few of them basic facts. Yeah. And what I've learned, right, um, <laughs> bit weird the way all these people have something in common that they're all a bit weird when, the, when they're younger. Okay. They've got Go some on, sort of illness. Was... Go on. Well, you know, Rasputin, he, he wasn't well. As a kid, yeah. Che Guevara. Oh, was this is Rasputin, the Mad Monk, wasn't well. Yeah. Yeah. Um, che Guevara. Yeah. Um, asthma. Asthma, really bad asthma. Mm. Yeah. Uh, Hitler. He was only a one bit, bit mental. Yeah. <laughs> only one. His mother. He got was what, a bit mental. That could be libelous. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. And um, uh, who've we done? And Churchill. Yeah. Um, very weak, there. very weak child. Was he? Um, he only spoke to his dad four times in his whole lifetime. Really? Yeah, didn't get on with his dad. Right. And I think one of the times when his dad spoke to him, he, he was having a go, saying um, he didn't do as well in the army as he wanted him to. Right. So that's that's a pretty sad bit of picture yeah, up of yeah, it. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, anyway. So that spurred him on, anyway. Yeah. Um, I'm not going in all the ins and outs. Very, uh, very uh, important bloke. <laughs> okay. <laughs> no, I, I, seriously. I mean, yeah. your dad bought the tapes, didn't he? Yes. And I can understand why, because he did. He did change a lot for us. You know what I mean? We won't be sat here now talking like this. Why? We could have been German. <laughs> yep. He didn't let that happen. No. Um, everyone had a go at him, right? When it when it when like uh, I think it was Chamberlain who was in power, yeah. and he was like saying, "Don't be trusting that Hitler." Yeah. You know. And everyone's like, look, stop causing trouble. Chamberlain sorted it out, you know, he sorted out a peace agreement. Yeah. And he was like, uh, no, I don't trust him. And everyone's like, oh, you, you know, you're just causing trouble, you know, everyone else is happy. Then it turned out that Hitler mm. did actually do the dirty. Yeah. yeah and try and come over. And I then, remember, he did, didn't he do something, he started yeah. a war or so something? There was a conflict of some kind. Yeah. Yeah. He start, started a problem. Mm. And uh, everyone went, hang on a minute, that Churchill knew what he was talking about. Yeah. yeah. Get him back in charge. Sure. And they got him in, and uh, Hitler was scared of him because he knew that he wasn't going to be having any lies or anything. He couldn't try it on with, with, with Churchill. Yeah, and especially uh, when he was a little bit pissed up and coked and with a was? big cigar. Churchill. He wasn't that. He wasn't doing that. I think I think a lot were in the, in the during the war, in the war cabinet. I think they had to have things to keep him awake all night and stuff. And uh, he yeah. certainly liked a brandy. Rick Winston Churchill was coked up, was he? <laughs> I mean, sorry, I just, I, this is something I wasn't aware of. If there are any historians uh, listening, uh, if I'm wrong, I'm sorry. Was that in the sorry. World at War? No, I don't think so. Any, any, uh, any uh, uh, historians or uh, uh, um, you know, experts on uh, on war, um, did uh, did Churchill and not, not some of the uh, the other uh, people during, uh, I think, the First and Second World War, uh, take a little bit so, of uh, so cocaine? Uh, so when it said that... Hitler, Doctors certainly used to. Hitler liked cakes. Would they be like the funny sort of cakes? No, they, he probably did like a little bit of uh, Madeira cake. Right. Yeah, that's probably nothing. Like. Sorry, carry on. So um, anyway, um, he beat the Bosch. Yeah, 
did all that. Oh, that's steady on. His personal life's nothing to do with it. <laughs> and the, the most amazing <laughs> bit is, right, he wasn't he wasn't fit, and uh, he had a couple well, of strokes. Well, he's a good-looking bloke in many ways. <laughs> Well, he, he, he had a couple of strokes, but he had a stroke on, say... He, we've I'm had that. He beat the boss. He likes to have a couple of strokes. Yeah. Let's not get into innuendo, Carl. <laughs> it's stupid. <laughs> right, say he had, like, a stroke on a Tuesday. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was he was up and fighting again on a Wednesday. Really? He was, he was a strong bloke. Yeah. And then he died at about the age of 86 or something. He was a good lad, wasn't he? He was really good. Yeah, is, so he, is, he your, is, he the, is he the one you, you favour most of all? I'd ones say out of all, I mean, Rasputin, I don't understand why he got, like I said, I don't know why they made a book on him. No. No. He just didn't deserve it. No, <laughs> no. Che Guevara, you know, he had his, he had his time, I suppose, and uh, yeah. did, a bit, did a bit good for certain people. Sure. Sort, yeah. Sorted Cuba out. Yeah. Doesn't really affect me. No. no. Uh, Hitler, I mean, enough said. Yeah. yeah. Bad bloke. Churchill, sorted <laughs> it all out. Yeah. And like I so said, your favourite out of the four of them, the, the, the of all those four, is Churchill. Churchill yeah. He's brilliant. Brilliant. I, 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 I agree. I agree with you. I think. What I love uh, <laughs> with with your kind of sort of summary of these people's incredible lives is the way that it's almost like I remember in Looking magazine. <laughs> I don't remember looking, it was the Junior yeah, TV Times. Looking. They used yeah. to have um, half a page, which was a comic strip, yeah. summarising someone's life. You might have, say, Five Star, the story of Five Star. Yeah. And you'd have a picture. I always remember the Roger Moore one yeah. was a picture of, like, Roger's parents. It was like, Roger Moore was born in 1930, da, da, da. Picture of Roger's parents. Roger grew up during the war. Picture of Roger yeah. running down the street, right, yeah. this is a school kid, with a, a Spitfire coming behind him like he was going to try and shoot him. Mr. Smith, surely. Exactly, uh, exactly Mr. Smith, yeah. Re Roger uh, took up acting. Picture yeah. of Roger, like, acting. Yeah. Roger became James Bond. James Bond, Roger's now a popular, um, you know, star in his own right, and there's a lot of work for charity. Brilliant. It summed up the whole thing in kind of I think they used to have that in, uh, uh, one of the TV Times or the yeah, summer. I, think they may have I remember sort of when it was, uh, Tina Turner, um, st uh, what's it, born Sarah May Bullock, uh, then it was Nutbush City Limits, stop hitting me, Ike. <laughs> yeah. And then, uh, <laughs> you're simply <laughs> the best, <laughs> and that was it. It was <laughs> <laughs> great. That's very much what the, uh, how your summary of, of Great, great events is. But I'd say on. if you didn't know about Churchill, you've learned a bit today. So I thought so. Can, any, can people call in that, uh, to the, uh, the, the, well, yeah. all these, all these fellas taking uh, cocaine? Uh, I think I'm right. It's 08 700 800 1234. Yeah. Give us a call, XFM 104.9. Did Winston Churchill and various other dignitaries take coke during C the war? During the war, saying up for the war effort, but the emergency uh, summits and meetings, I, I, I think it was, I, I think it's been documented. I could be wrong. And let me tell you now, it's not happening today. Wow. Pete, you're on there. <laughs> <laughs> He's there, isn't he, to save me? For Nancy, XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant, and Carl Fulton. I'm getting excited now because we've had loads of um, calls and emails. Uh, uh, not only backing me up, but going a little bit further. Um, apparently, uh, uh, Johnny Mango called in again. He's, our, he's become our sort of official researcher on the, on this show. Um, that um, there is evidence that uh, Queen Victoria in Balmoral, with a young house guest, Winston Churchill, used to consume cocaine-filled lozenges. Mm -hmm. So there you go. Also. Uh, MDMA was a, a precursor of sort of ecstasy, a derivative, and uh, that was big in the day, giving soldiers, you know, a little um, pick me up. So it's not so mad, is it? It sort Which of makes sense because he was it? into his speeches and that, and they say that coke gives you sort of, <laughs> you know, the balls to stand up and, and say like. Not that that's a good thing. And no, it's not. No, definitely not. No. Right, but. It apparently it gives you, it gives you, it makes you confident, doesn't it? So you can stand up and say, you know, we're going to fight them on the beaches. Yeah. And all that. And, and sound yeah. like you mean it. Yeah, exactly, yeah. When he was sort of like, you know, um, a little bit pissed up with his cigar on, coked off his tits, he wanted a fight. He didn't care where it was. He'd fight on a yeah. beach. He yeah. didn't care. He yeah. didn't care if he got sand in his new trainers. Exactly. He was boosted up. <laughs> yeah, yeah, yeah. You want to fight? <laughs> yeah. yeah. That's why he was coming hard. He was very much, you got to think of him as the Liam Gallagher of his day. <laughs> uh. <laughs> yeah. Oh, dear. Are we oh. allowed to talk about this? I mean, I don't mean in terms of referencing drugs, but are we allowed to, is this like libelous to Winston Churchill? We, one, or you can't him? libel the dead. Yeah, but Two, you, it's a, a Is that only it, in America, we're, we're, I'm asking, and I, we're, not, we're not saying, you know, to, to I think you're probably, probably going to do also a fair, fair comment. Um, uh, three, we say we were joking. Yeah. Four, it's a satire. <laughs> yeah. Um, five, we love him. Five, we're not, we're not condoning <laughs> drugs in any way. Six, um, this is Dermot O'Leary's show. <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have a go at him anyway. I said he's all right. <laughs> 
there's, uh, if there's any Laura against Rasputin, we might be in trouble. <laughs> <laughs> Laura against Rasputin. Laura against Rasputin. You did willfully Rasputin. <laughs> yeah. All over you the airways. You did slag off Russia's greatest love machine. <laughs> yeah, yeah. <laughs> you didn't shoot him till he was dead, did you? Oh, oh mm. put some poison into his I'll tell you wine. this, if there's any other historical questions that people want answered, then we're the men. Because really, with, with the three of us, our knowledge of the fact that the Hindenburg was filled with helium. <laughs> yeah. Um, uh, <laughs> the, the kind of coke habits and various drug habits of, um, of Britain's most famous uh, political leader. Yeah. We've got the answers to all of it. Einstein. Go on. I found out in the week that he, um, he didn't talk to Louis VI. See, it's all, it's all these people who are weird. Churchill couldn't read, could he, till he was about eight or nine. Really? Yeah. Oh, well, there you go. He had uh, he got a D in history apparently, GCSE. Yeah. <laughs> Just one better. Mm. No, but um, Carl uh, called me in the week and he was a little bit stressed because he's had a couple of he's had a bad week now. He got stressed about Hitler and and Churchill and I said, well, we're we're, we're chill out a little bit and we're, I'll teach him something a little bit um, cosier. And I said, like, what about animals? No, you know, not frightening mm. other animals. You're interested in animals, aren't you? Yeah. You know, and. Um, and he went, oh, all right then, all right then. And then he went, okay, here's a question for you, Pever. So there's there's three animals without ears. He said, and I've told you one. <laughs> and I went, well, that's the snake, because he was talking about the snake. He went, I went, I went, hold on, Carl, there's loads of animals without ears. He went, there's not, there's three. I went, there's loads. I said, jellyfish, worms, or, um, single cell protozoa, peripherous. But he went, oh, what are you talking about? What are you talking about? Animals, proper animals. I went, they are animals. He went, no, proper animals. And I went, do you mean mammals? He went, what are you on about? I said, are, are these animals, are, are, have they got legs and are they fur bearing, right? And, and he went, one is. They've got legs. I went, I don't know, I give up. He went, right, the turtle. I went, right, yeah. And he went, and the bumblebee. <laughs> he said, that's the one with fur. <laughs> <laughs> that's the one with fur. <laughs> the one well with <laughs> what are you thinking? What is in your head, Carl? Which has got the most fur, a bee or a turtle? It's not fur. What is it? Well, well it's, it's, you know... He's done you there, Jerry. It's pseudo-hairs, isn't it? It's like, a, it's a hair, it's a keratin thing. It's not like we have, like, mammals grow fur. Do you know mm. what I mean? Yeah. <laughs> He's not convinced! <laughs> well, so when, when we say, like, fur, we, 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 mammals are warm-blooded creatures. Yeah. Uh, often, usually percent, or there's a few exceptions, right, that, that give their milk to their young, nurture their young, and they have fur. Have you heard about osters? O osters? Um, oysters. <laughs> um, they, they, one minute they're a man, then they're a woman, then they're a man again. <laughs> Look, Eddie Izzard. Now that's, that's libelous. <laughs> He's a transvestite, could I say. He's not a transsexual. Let's say that straight away. I'm retracting that. Right, go on then. Give us what? some more facts. Um... No, I've got you, um, Aesop's Fables. No, but you had some more facts you told me that were dead good. I just wondered if Steve knew them. What? What do you want to know? The ones that you read out to me. You had, um, you had one about a, uh, the spiky thing. Go on. Porcupine. Give yeah. me a clue. How many spikes has a porcupine got? Dunno. How many was it? I think it was about 10,000. But, I, I, these aren't, these aren't the most interesting facts, are they? It's alright. <laughs> it's alright though, isn't it? Yeah. And he went, but how can they say that? You could say that, uh, uh, you know, we've got a certain amount of hairs in our head. I went 10, 100,000 average. He went, yeah, but I haven't. So how do we know that that porcupine that they've counted is the same for all of them? <laughs> might have had alopecia. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, yeah, he might have been a particularly hairy one. You know what I mean? Right, you've got a, 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 do you know, do you know what a fable is? I tried to explain briefly. Do you, do you know what a fable I've is? I've got about? a rough idea. Okay, it, it's a thing that uses sort of uh, metaphor analogy just to 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 explain sort of uh, 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 morals. I mean, they're they're very they're very very old for a start, and it's all. Th um, I'll give you an example of one. Um, uh, oh, a quick one. Oh, the one about the the um, the dog with two bones. Uh, he goes to a, a dog's got a bone. He sees a reflection in the lake, and he thinks, oh, that dog's got a nice bone. I'll have that, and as he goes to get that one, in the reflection, he drops the one he's got, and that's one about, you know... I think I was, with uh, I was told one when I was younger. Go on. Uh, I think it was one. <laughs> this young lad, he's got a dog, right, and he sort of is about eight years old, and this dog, he's had it since he was about four, and it's a bit tired now, and he chucks sticks for it, and he doesn't, he doesn't go for it. And uh, he's saying to his mum, oh, I want a new dog. Because this one's useless, it doesn't do what, you know, it doesn't have any fun with me. 
So they said, oh no, but you know, Rover's a good little dog, you should look after it. And he's like, oh, I don't, I don't like it, I want a new one. So they buy him a new puppy, and it's it's running around, yapping about, and he's loving it, and he's playing around with it in the grass. And then uh, one day he goes to the park, and he's messing about and rolling about with it, and he falls into the lake, <laughs> right? And the little puppy's like yapping at him, and he's going, help me, help me, and the little, little dog's yapping. And then the old dog comes and gets his collar, and it pulls him out of the lake, and he goes, oh, God, you know, why did I forget about you? You're the better dog. And he loved that one again rather than the puppy. I got a feeling that was Lassie. <laughs> yeah, that was an episode of Lassie. <laughs> what well, was, what's the moral? Over. What's the moral there, Carl? What, what's that telling? What, what's that explaining through analogy? Sort of, don't forget the old. <laughs> Look after old people. <laughs> I remember there was one I heard once about a young boy who, who got trapped in a lake inside a, a, cage. a cage. But he, he, he loved his trainers so much. He loved his trainers so much he wasn't going to get them wet. And but the even though he had came, to get out there. And he, even though he thought that was the important thing because it's material value, he actually drowned and the trainers were no good to him then. I'll say that. Okay. <laughs> Hives, I hate to say I told you so. Now I want to uh, clear a couple of things up. Um, obviously, me and Steve, we, we love Carl. This is not, this is, the things we give Carl to read and talk about, it's not to embarrass him or stress him out at all. We genuinely like his view of the world. Yep. In fact, we did an interview yesterday with a bloke from the Standard who really liked the show and said, do, do you like Carl? Because you take the piss out of him a lot. And, um, you know, we, we just like to say, we love Carl. I said to that bloke, I said, it's like I've got a new kitten. I can't wait to get in and see his little face. On Saturdays, didn't I? Yes. And uh, uh, I think I'm worried because I thought I'd give Carl something he was really get his teeth into with his Aesop fables. It involves animals and you know little stories. But I've given him a couple, and he doesn't seem to be that impressed or understand the the concept. It's just of what. you said you'd bring in an animal fact book as well. And I can't see that anywhere. No. <laughs> well, you can only read one book at a time, can't well, you? Why didn't you bring the other one in first? Well, it's big. I've, I've got to work my way up to it. Sometimes I'll probably have to get a cab because it's a bit big. Now listen, I'll give, it, give it this one. This is an easy one. Now just think, right? Think just what it means. They're not that. They're not that hidden. They're not that cryptic. Just think what this means, okay? Okay. When the hares addressed a public meeting and claimed that all should have fair shares, the lions answered, "A good speech, hairy feet, but it lacks claws and teeth such as we have." How would you use that? No. What, what do you think that means? This is this this translated from the I don't know uh, Greek or something. I don't know. It was it was Aesop. Where's he from? Greek. Yeah. So it you know it, it should I should I do it in my own language? Okay. Um. So what what would happen if there's 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 hares and they have a meeting in the jungle with like loads of lions and go Hey, hold on, wait a minute. I think we should all be equal and share everything. All right. And the lions go Well, yeah, it's easy for you to say. We've got claws and teeth. Yeah. What does that mean? It's saying, like, uh, coarser hares want that, because it's better for them. The lions get nothing out of it, because they're already king of the jungle. That's right. So it's, ne it's, ne it's negotiating from weakness. Anyone can negotiate from strength, but negotiating from weakness is your... It's, it's you know, it's, it'd be lovely. It's a lovely, utopian look at the animal kingdom. But the way you said it is better than the way they worded it. <laughs> well, that's uh, but that's because uh, Ricky's very much the modern Lisa. <laughs> I mean, many people have thought that. You know, that's why he's getting a lot of awards with the TV show. <laughs> For him, Thank that's, you. that's a favourite. So look, AR, take that home, and read ones you like, and tell me about the ones you like, ones that click. I don't care if you only come in with, like, one or two. Go, I'll tell you what, Rick, that's a mate, that there's one thing that I've learned from that. You know, because sometimes you can know all these phrases, and until something happens, you don't, you don't think, you know, you, everyone's heard, you know, to, um, I don't know, to err is human, to forgive divine. But, and then some, uh, you know, might happen, do you go, oh, that, that's what that means, that's amazing. So, you know. Do you know any, Steve, I found? <gasps> Wait, what's that? A fable. Uh, well, I would imagine that the most famous one I've always remembered is the, uh, you know, the, the lion with the, uh, the thing in its hoof. Do you remember that? Paw. The, the lion, yeah, with, the, with the, the, the spike in its paw, and a smaller animal gets it out for it, but it still attacks it anyway. Well, that's life, isn't it? Well. I read one the other day, actually, which was very interesting. It was one that uh, the famous film director Orson Welles said. Oh, yeah. Which he said, uh, apparently there was a, a, a bear going across uh, a lake, wading through the lake, and a scorpion said, um, 
well, let me go on your back, will you? Come on, just let me go on your back. We'll go across. It'd be brilliant. He goes, well, no, you'll just sting me. He goes, don't be stupid. If I sting you, you'll die, and we'll both drown. And he goes, oh, fair enough. Who, who was doing the stinging? The scorpion. The scorpion. Right, okay. Yeah. And the bear's wading through the water. Yeah. So mm. the scorpion jumps on the back, and they wade through the water, and halfway across, the scorpion stings the bear. And the bear goes, well, we're both going to die now. He goes, yeah, it's my nature. I thought he was going to say, I can swim. <laughs> <laughs> ah, oh, you're the best. What's, what's the one about? Um, do, does that mean anything to you? It's my nature. I, you know, that's in that's, my nature. That's the way it is. That's that's what I do. Yeah, I'm a scorpion. Yeah, one of my favourite ones. These, these don't mean anything to you, do they? I mean, what I'm saying is you're not impressed by them. They're all right. What about this? What about this one? Don't trust bears. Here's one. Here's one of my favourite. <laughs> what? Don't, he said, "Well, why not just say don't trust bears?" <laughs> The bear's the one that was too trustworthy. Don't trust scorpions. Yeah. Right, it's one of my favourite ones of all time, okay? Um, uh, a lion is dying. It's an old lion. He's in the front of his cave. And all the animals come around, like the foxes and the hyenas and, and, and the, uh, the rabbits. And they're all taking the piss out of him. And they're laughing at him. And they're laughing and going, you can't fight us now. Kind of like. And just before he dies, he goes, fine, but I was a lion once. Uh, what does that mean? Don't know. Well, he's saying it's better to have lived and had what I had because I was, I was great, if only for a short time. And you lot are still alive, but you're nothing. You're, mm. you're rabbits and hares. I was a lion once. So, you know, I'm Are they happy. always using animals for these stories? <laughs> well, yeah, I could, I could change it to refrigerators and household appliances if it would make it help. But animals, you know... Uh, <laughs> I remember the one about being ill a lot, and you say something about, um, Go on. Uh, you know, mm. if you keep doing that, if you keep having time off, well, I won't believe you. That's the boy who cried wolf. Yeah. Is that what? Yeah. Do you know yeah, that one? Have you heard I, the I, famous I one? This is probably the most powerful one. When you're pulling a face, <laughs> and they say, well, if you wind keep doing that, the wind changes. I've heard that. Like that. Yeah. 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 you know that's scientifically proven? That is. That can happen. That can happen. Should we yeah. have hip hop hooray? Yeah. Are you queued up for that? No, but go on, you, uh... Carl, sort it out, mate. I was gonna... No, come on, this is what I asked you to play, mate. If you've not, you know, you're getting too big for your boots now with your showbiz lifestyle. You're not paying yeah. attention, are you? You're not playing yeah. the record if you want you to play. Heat magazine's favourite. Yeah. Okay, so, um... I've oh, you dropped that. You've been very clumsy. Oh. You know, you're, uh, you know, with the big I can't you're believe you're not... Him. Oh, fables are great. He's not impressed, is he, really? No, I am. I, I mean, you know, once I get to this book home tonight and that, and yeah. have, a, have a read, I might, I might change my mind on them next week. You're coming all stressed. I'm, I'm not impressed with the ones you've you've been talking about. I must admit. Okay, okay. Okay. Th sure. This album is by this group Nerd, who are big uh, hip hop and R&B oh, producers so in the states. Yeah. We've played a track from them in the past, Bobby James. This album's been re-recorded. I don't know why exactly. With live instruments, you don't get many R&B and hip hop records now with live instruments. So it's pretty. It's, it's all computers, isn't it, Steve? <laughs> these days and drum machines. And uh, there is a forthcoming single. I suspect it might be this track, Rockstar. I'm not going to play that. I'm going to play a track to Things Are Going to Get Better. <laughs> No order, here to stay. Sadly, we're not here to stay, Steve. We've only got about two more minutes. That's true enough. Yeah? Well, I think that's just time for some uh, interesting facts that uh, Johnny Mango, our researcher from uh, LooseControl.com, has uh, emailed us. A few uh, familiar ones, favourite ones of yours, I think. Go um, on. Any ones I don't know, though? I, don't, I think you know this one, don't you? A pig's orgasm lasts for 30 minutes. I know. And uh, a pig can't actually look directly up. Wouldn't it thought so after 30 minutes of coming. <laughs> no, absolutely. Um, Daddy, be careful here. That's incredible. Remember what happened to Tom Bins? Go on. Humans and dolphins are the only species that have sex for pleasure. Uh, bonobos do as well, they've rediscovered. Really which, really? which is a... Uh, bonobo? Uh, yeah, um, a, a, bonobo? A, a chimpanzee, like a chimpanzee. Right. So, yeah. So it's three now. Can't believe dolphins are getting... They're three, they're, all, they're all at it now. <laughs> dolphins get <laughs> Yeah. Um, uh, polar bears are left-handed. Yeah. So, yeah. I yeah. don't quite know how they work that out. Did they give them spelling tests? Uh, writing tests. Oh yeah, they probably just do it, do it. It's probably the paw they use to hide up the, the black nose during a hunt. Of course, yeah. of course. Um, some lions mate over 50 times a day? Yeah, not not every day of the year. Okay, they don't do that every day? No. Okay, because no. again, I'm worried. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. <laughs> they start, I'm, you know, I didn't think that dolphins... What day of the year do you do it 50 times? What, <laughs> is it, it's coming up to it. It's April, isn't it? You'd like to get out there. I have a special day, yeah. Yeah. Uh, maybe we could, we could coincide that with the uh, balloon event. <laughs> It'll just me, be me quietly humping in the corner. <laughs> Volunteers, welcome to email now, you know. Um, <laughs> and it, all, all the proceeds go to charity. If you are a desperate lioness. Exactly. Yeah. Uh, butterflies taste with their feet. I didn't know that. Interesting. 
I didn't know that. That is interesting. But they don't eat much, do they? Because they only live a day. Good point. They wouldn't need to eat. Um, an ostrich's eye is bigger than its brain? Yeah, I knew that. Yeah. That's yeah. extraordinary. That is, yeah. Uh, yeah. and the, uh... Yeah. But Carl, how big are your eyes? <laughs> Cruel. <laughs> Finally, I think we've discussed this before, haven't we? A cockroach will live nine days without its head yeah. before it starves to death. Yeah, that's only because it can't get water and food yet. It would, it would be quite happy going around doing its normal things. Yeah. I mean, Probably if, work. if you're just as good without your head as with your head... May as well not have a head. I just... I don't see the point. Well, that was uh, thanks to Johnny Mangler there of... Uh, what's his website called? Uh, it was turned into a sort of... Uh, Volunteered uh, researcher. Yeah, he's very fast. Losecontrol.com. Can I just say as well, we've had lots of emails from different people just uh, saying they enjoy the show and offering little tidbits and things. Uh, Nick Wilson, Sarah and Lauren, Ken, Dan, Jane. She wanted to mash. We didn't play Ash. Never mind. Oh. Lee, Jez, Derry. There's loads of people there. Well, I'm gonna, uh, again, we we're talking earlier about you know you not caring about being like a, a geek or a freak oh, or right, not trendy. Not. No, I'm just saying. I am trendy. I am. And I know, yeah. And uh, I'm gonna play a bit of an easy listening. I apologise to those people who still tune in expect to um, hear two hours of new metal or gorillas. Um, and this is a uh, very old-fashioned, lovely tune. It's bread. I hope you enjoy it. Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage, bread. bread. <laughs> New order here to stay on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais. With we're, we're here to stay. Yeah. Uh, for the next two hours. <laughs> yeah. All right. That's Steve Merchant there. Hello there. We're here with our producer here, Carl Pilgrim. We'll be talking to Carl a little bit later because um, we've got to have his thoughts on Aesop's fables, continuing the, the education of, of Carl. We've got some great music coming up, haven't Bloody we? good music. A little bit of, uh, oh, what have we got? Like Happy Mondays. Baddy Drawn Boy. Yeah, all that. Bob Dylan. All sorts. All sorts coming up. So yeah, um, Rick, I don't know, I just wanted to bring your attention to this. Uh, yeah. Someone passed this on to me. It's from the uh, Guardian's Media website. There's a sort of website that's dedicated to kind of media information. Is this about our complaint? Well, it, the headline is Comedian Rapped Over Radio Innuendo. Right. Uh, Jessica Hodgson has uh, written the article. Well, are you familiar with this? Have you well, seen well this? be careful now because we actually got a complaint, and a lot of people don't know this, we got a complaint upheld. And, um, well, all of this we're, is... We're in, very sorry. We, did, we didn't mean to offend. Um, and it was a while ago, uh, so we are going to be very careful. Carl's getting very nervous. We're just going to read out. We're not going to editorialise, Carl. We're just going to read out what The Guardian printed about us, all right? Okay. Comedian Ricky Gervais has had a dressing down from a broadcasting watchdog for his repeated use of the word cock in a lunchtime radio show. <laughs> that's all right. That's what that's it says, fine. Carl. That's what it, I just he's not, he's not going to say this it again. News. He's not, yeah, yeah. Go Imagine on. Imagine this is the news yeah. and I'm reading it. yeah. The Broadcasting Standards Commission upheld a complaint against the comedian for coarse sexual innuendo yeah. in the programme on London station XFM. The Commission acknowledged that the presenter's remarks were intended to be humorous, but took the view that the amount and detail of the coarse sexual innuendo had exceeded acceptable boundaries for broadcast, said the BSC, uh, BSC in a statement. The complaint objected to a section in the comics Saturday afternoon show when he discussed the different meanings of the word cock. Gervais wondered aloud whether the word was acceptable when discussing birds, but not the male sexual organ. A BSC spokesman said the comedian went on and on about it for nearly five minutes. XFM, a self-styled alternative radio station, said in its defence that its remit was to provide cutting-edge programmes for a youth audience. The station said the programme's brief was to include elements of alternative comedy within certain shows that would not fit within a more mainstream radio station format. In this particular show, it was not the presenter's intention to shock when they took a humorous look at how the English language could be construed in different ways within different contexts. Gervais, whose big break was on Channel 4's 11 o'clock show, has shot to household status through the portrayal of David Brent, the middle manager from hell in BBC Two's cult show, The Office. Just in case you didn't know who I was talking about. Yeah, he's a household bit. name, yeah. but they just thought... You might not have heard of him, but he is a household name. Now, um, that, that's good. That's good reporting, and they're quite right about it. And just to remind people, it was when Steve said the only um, uh, bird that hasn't got a penis is the swan, and I went on about the male bird being called the cock, but I couldn't use that to mean, and, you know... It was, it, it was childish, yeah. you know. But what, what annoys me is, I'm sure I've heard things on, like, Radio 1 like that. Oh, what's the, uh, the, uh, what's her name in the morning, Sarah? Uh, Cox. Yeah. And, uh, as there's a DJ, uh, like, like, Carl, um... Uh, Cox? Yeah, so you've got... <laughs> Carl. What's the matter? I'm just saying. You're just saying... There, there's a pair of... DJs on, yeah, but you we've know. We've done this. And uh, what are you talking about? We're just talking about names. They're just saying the names. Now I love Cox in the morning. You're a big fan. You're a big fan of Cox. Oh. And at night, what's the matter with you? Come on, Carl. Call? All right. We've taken it. We've been. Have you actually been wrapped over this? Have no. You, I don't know what. <laughs> have that you means. had a dressing down? 
No. When did that happen? I don't know. I, I was I might... meant to tell you, and I never got round to it. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Thanks, then. So don't do it again. <laughs> Pinky Afro on XFM 104.9. <laughs> oh, can, I, can I just add that in case yes. you don't know what what you know the frequency, frequency is? Yeah, exactly. Uh, why, why, why do they say that? Are they not, so, so you know what you listen to. So you go. I tell you what. I like that radio station. Yeah. And it was XFM 104.9. Exactly, exactly. I listen to that again. You listen to that. You can retune. Yeah. I was wondering actually. Rick, I Stay I, locked up this end of the <laughs> dial. True enough. Um, I was wondering because you know obviously we, we're still trying to campaign to get Carl into air into the air yeah uh, with the balloon uh, enterprise and obviously the work's been done on that don't fret don't worry a lot of people are asking for an update but you know we'll obviously let you know when it's all going to take place yeah but I was wondering These whether things take time exactly but I was wondering whether we should also have another kind of campaign some kind of campaign maybe one that could involve you Rick because oh. I'm obviously no I'm particularly concerned Carl I don't know how familiar you are with this with Ricky's eating habits. Mm. Because he just he's so, he eats so unhealthily. No, I, it scares I, I, me. No, come on, Rick, don't give no, me I'm this. No, I'm getting better now. No, I'm you're not getting better. I have a smoothie every day. Yeah, but I've told you before that's largely sugar. No, a homemade one. I don't care, Rick. That's not enough. It can't counteract. Right, this is idea. This is Ricky Gervais's <laughs> idea of healthy eating. Right, we'll be in the canteen at the BBC. He'll go. I'm going to be eat healthy today, which means he'll have two slices of pizza instead of pizza and chips. That's basically the, the, that's his theory, right? And it's like it's I don't know what because he can't eat anything which is kind of which doesn't is basically doesn't sting the roof of his mouth with, with, with flavour. <laughs> so like for instance, he, he's always yeah. got headaches. He's always got a headache. I guess because you don't you just drink coffee and coke. You never drink water. Your your body is dehydrated. And I said drink, drink a glass of water. No, boring. <laughs> it's boring. Water. I don't know if if we were in the desert stranded. Boring. It's boring, Steve. I'll wait till the next cafe. <laughs> Uh, right, and sometimes you'll go like, oh, we'll have a, let's have a, I'll have a salad, right? I mean, you'll get like a feta cheese salad, right? And he'll eat the little bits of feta cheese, leave the salad. <laughs> then he goes downstairs and goes, I'm still hungry. It didn't fill me up, that salad. I go, no, what didn't fill you up was the 200 milligrams of goat cheese that you <laughs> ate. That's what didn't fill you up. Uh. So I just, this should be a campaign. I don't know whether it, I can observe it, people could sponsor him, something. Just eat healthy, we could do it for some kind Send of big charity. Fruit. I don't think the fruit's the issue, Okay, really. if you mash it, I'll, I'll eat anything Rick, if it's I'm not mashed. saying that you don't eat a certain amount of fruit. I'm saying that everything else you eat is unbalanced, and it's just rich with fat, and it's awful. Yeah. It's sausages, it's beans. You're such working-class scum, aren't you? <laughs> it's the smell of chip fat. It's all around him. Do you know what I mean? It's like, even when you can't smell it, you know it's there, seeping through his veins. <laughs> I imagine when he was growing up, it was just chip fat it was. in the house. Just a big... It was. Oh, constantly boiling. It always, there was always chips on with everything, exactly. yeah, or fried. Do you want wheat bits in the morning? Deep fat yeah. fry that. <laughs> It's such scum. And now it's like, oh yeah, my palate, you know, I can't eat anything. It's got no flavour. Everything's got to have cheese on it. Sprinkling Parmesan cheese. More Parmesan cheese. And if someone, like, doesn't give him, like, a whole tub of Parmesan cheese when you're in a restaurant, even though he's ordered, like, a lobster or whatever, <laughs> he's like, he, he sort of has a go at the waiter, or, like, not, not to their face. Obviously, he's too much of a coward, but he'll say to me, like, he didn't, he should have left the cheese. He said, cheat with the cheese. I don't give me any cheese. He just gave you three bucketfuls. Oh, it's a cheese. I should have... More cheese here. Uh, it's pathetic. Oh, so I just God. think we should do something to because I'm panicked, I'm worried, you well, know, I'm worried I've started for your working out a little bit. I sort of work out twice or three times a week. I don't think week. that's going to counteract it, Rick. And I drink water through the night when I wake up and I'm dehydrated. From all the booze you've just drunk. <laughs> yeah. And, uh, and I have a smoothie in the morning, don't I? I don't, I, oh, you know what my views are on the smoothies. I don't think that's <laughs> counteracting. You're Andy Smoothie. You are, <laughs> I you're Andy Smoothie. Because I don't think it's counteracting all the mate. other You problems. have got a problem. <laughs> There's nothing wrong with the smoothie. Right, oh. fine. Okay, well, if, you, if, you, if you're happy to carry on as you are. Yeah, go on. Um, Badly Drawn Boy, obviously, has done the soundtrack Loving of this it. new film, uh, About a Boy. Yeah. Which has got Hugh Grant in it. And, obviously, uh, this current single, uh, what's it called, the, the current one that's out? The Silent Sigh, that's currently, obviously, that's being played on XFM. But this is another track from this album, which is the soundtrack. Lots of, kind of, uh, little bits of filler, bits of musical instrumental stuff, but all of it's very nice. This is a cracking tune, track three, Something to Talk About. Okay. Lovely. Yeah, good tune, that, I think. Uh, Sarah and Lauren have uh, emailed in. They said they wanted something from Elliot Smith or maybe Jimmy Webb. That's actually produced by the producer of Elliot Smith. And Is that a, a, I haven't brought any Jimmy Webb into that. No, we'll maybe play that next time. I'll play some next, yeah, yeah, play next week. That's Badly Drawn Boy, though, from the uh, soundtrack to this film About a Boy, and that's called uh, Something to Talk About. We've only got the stuff in the library. Do they want Four Non Blondes? Because <laughs> we've got that in the library, haven't we? The oh, best of Tony Basil. And we've got um, uh, just about every song that InXS ever recorded. Exactly. We don't play enough InXS. Do I we? don't think we do, do <laughs> we? <laughs> no. I can't believe it. Uh, um, yeah. XFM 104.9 coming up 
white van man, white van Carl. White van Carl. Uh, I was uh, obviously out with Carl last night. A lot oh, of yeah. I realise this because we went out. There's, uh, what's the name of that evening? Marketplace, extracurricular. Extracurricular, yeah, various uh, XFM DJs go down there and just play an eclectic mix. Just spin some tunes on. Absolutely, and I'm thinking of doing it in a couple of weeks, Rick, and obviously you know my turntablist skills now are, uh, are yeah. pretty, yeah, something yeah. to behold. Yeah, yeah. yeah and, yeah, yeah. um, uh, I'll tell you this, what, I did an amazing mix the other day with my friend Dan. We did, yeah. we spent two and a half hours on it. This is how we spend our evenings now, two and a half hours mixing from a trip-hop, sort of, art, you know, hip-hop style beat into uh, Arthur's Theme by Christopher Cross. Great When tune. you get caught between the moon and New Written York City. Written by four people. Four people, Back yeah. Rack. Carol Bayasaga, Christopher Cross, and a fourth one. Absolutely. Phone in. If you know that. Maybe we should... But, um, who, who knows the fourth person credited on that tune? If I were a prize. 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. Also, someone else to phone in. I saw, I saw an advert, right? There's, there's a lot of toys. I think it must be... Is it because it's Easter holidays or something? Right. And I was watching that, and there's one of those Transformer type things, and it goes, in its shield. It strikes and then goes into its shield, and it goes into a little pod. And I'm sure it was called a Bolock. <laughs> right. Now, I, I must have misheard it. There's no way you can call a little kid's toy a bolock. So, can you phone in? I'm, I, I'm quite willing to be wrong. It'd be very disappointing. But, uh, you know, are people making little bolocks for kids? No. <laughs> yeah. Oh, wait. 700, 800, 1, 2, 3, 4. And what was the other question? Was there a, uh, the other question was who uh, oh, was, was the fourth, fourth person, person who wrote, wrote uh, Arthur's theme? Yeah. When you get caught between the noon and New York City. It's uh, crazy, it's but it's true. true. Yeah. The only thing you can do is fall in love, Carl. But was that with Carl last night? Obviously, party animal. You know, he's hanging out with some of my friends. You enjoyed yourself, didn't you, Carl? It's all right. But uh, you were a bit worried about uh, Jennifer Lopez, weren't you? Yeah. What was the concern? Um, I don't really know what's going on in the pop world. Um, you you're joking? No. Go on. And um, I was there in the toilets, right? And I heard it playing out on the speaker, and I heard the DJ go, uh, "There you go. That's." Uh, Left Eye Lopez there. That's not... And I thought, it's Jennifer Lopez. No, it's the I little one. Had, she had some sort of eye injury. <laughs> <laughs> that was you Jennifer thought he was breaking the news of yeah. Jennifer Lopez losing an eye by calling her Left Eye Lopez. Yeah. Yeah. That's genius. Don't worry, we put him to... We put, we, we put him right, it's okay. Yeah. It's that easy. Yeah. But you were worried for a while, weren't you? You were anxious for a while. I, I, I had no idea. And the thing is... I heard that on like Thursday, so for like three days I've been thinking. You've been panicking. Why she called that? Because she changed the name before, hasn't she? To J Lo or something. Yeah. So I thought, you know. Yeah. Has she got some people after her? Does she owe someone money? <laughs> Keep changing yeah. her name. That was Wobby Gabrielle <laughs> and Rise. <laughs> 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 anyway, more music, Ray? Oh, I'd love to. So yeah, yeah, what, what have you got? What have you got lined up there, Carl? Beat a band. Oh yeah, 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 sweet, 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 Club there, spread your love on XFM 104.9. I'm loving this, Steve. It's a lovely day. Yeah. We're, we're playing, playing some, some great music. We're playing some great tunes, aren't we? Absolutely. We're having some great chat. Yeah. Yeah. So uh, let's carry on. Let's continue. Well, absolutely. Well, obviously Carl was out with me last night, and he saw that I'm, you know, he knows I'm a ladies' man, and that was obvious. Carl, you could see the vibe around me, couldn't you? Mm. When the, you know, when the chicks were talking to me, and uh, just re remembered recently, actually, I was on a train coming back from uh, hometown Bristol. And I was on the train, and uh, this girl walks on, good-looking girl. I thought, hey, uh, it, largely empty carriage. I'm thinking, my luck's in, you know, because I, I take every opportunity, Carl. That's the thing about me, you know. I don't, I, I, I don't choose. She was good-looking girl. She sat down. I thought she sat down right near me. I thought, brilliant. As uh, the guy, this guy comes up behind her, and she's, I think, oh, it's probably a boyfriend or something. Sits down next to her, and I listen in on the conversation, you know, because I'm pretending to read. It was very clever. I read the same page for hours. So I was pretending to listen. I was listening, but pretending to read. And um, I realised that it's not her boyfriend or anything. It's just some guy she's met on the platform. And I'm thinking, brilliant, if she's the kind of girl who's just going to start talking to someone, you know, on a platform, on a train, brilliant, I'm going to be in here. Because he was only going one stop. So I'm thinking, what's the worst that can happen? He'll nick off, you know, I'll get chatting to her, you know, and uh, who knows, I could join the, what's the, is there a train equivalent? Foot High Club. <laughs> the Foot High Club, brilliant. And uh, so I'm excited, you know, I'm listening in. And uh, they're talking. it turns out that they're both kind of uh, graduates who've just finished university or they're just they're coming to the finals or something. And they're chatting away, you know, and he's making a couple of witticisms, you know. And she's kind of tittering at his jokes. I'm thinking, well, I'll tell you this, if she's laughing at this kind of material, I am going to blow her away, you know, with my kind of anecdotes and wry observations, you know. Yeah. It was weak stuff, I've got to be honest. <laughs> really? He was coming out with nothing. He, yeah. he was running on empty, as far as I'm concerned. Yeah. And she was loving it. So I'm thinking, brilliant, I'm going to be right in here. And then they get moving on to higher brow things, you know, and... Um, 
I think she was going to study kind of uh, Marxism or, so, or something like that, uh, or communism, something. And uh, she was asking him, you know, by way of conversation, she was asking him what he knew about Marxism, you know. Mm. And he was fumbling for some his vague knowledge of it that he had in his yeah. life. And I'm just that, sat there thinking, yeah, come on, love, in any given capitalist environment, the proletariat will revolt against their oppression. Wow. The bourgeoisie, and after a brief <laughs> period of socialist rule, emerges a classist society governed by community corporations. Well, if that know. sort of talk wouldn't get a woman hot, I don't, come know, on, I don't Rick. know what, what you'd use If then Marx to... and Engels is not going to get a woman sweaty down below, no, then know. nothing is. No. Then my name is. You're just biding Richard. your time. Yeah? Exactly. I'm, yeah, I'm, yeah, wait, yeah, I'm yeah, just yeah. going to go in for the kill any yeah, minute. Yeah, 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 yeah. So um. So anyway. Uh, anyway. Yeah, it, it's, it comes to his stop. Right. He gets up. I'm thinking this is this is a piece of cake. And he gets off. And off he goes. He walks off. And I'm thinking brilliant. And I thought I'll wait. You know, I'll wait till the train's pulled away. I'm not going to leap in straight away. No. And uh, he comes back on the carriage. And I'm thinking, hang on a minute. He goes, uh, listen. Uh, do you mind if I give you my email address? Oh. Right. And uh, if you want to get in touch, email me. I'm thinking, come on, you loser. Get off now. Save your face, please. <laughs> yeah. Before to imagine. And she accepts the email address because she obviously doesn't want to hurt his feelings, whatever. I'm thinking, fair enough, she's a good woman. I'm liking her. I'm, yeah. her. I'm thinking, that's my kind of girl. So, anyway, um, he gets off. I'm sat there, the train pulls away. I'm thinking, yeah, I'll wait a few minutes, you know, I'll just you know, give it some time. Her phone rings. It's her friend on the phone. And uh, she starts to, and I was listening in, and she was going, uh, yeah, I just met a guy on the train. I'm thinking, yeah, that's true enough. She goes, yeah, he was a uh, good looking guy. I thought, you're having a laugh, love. <laughs> <laughs> to be honest. Because <laughs> I was looking at him, and she said, she said to her friend, <laughs> it looks a bit like tennis player Boris Becker. I thought, well, you, you, you should be so lucky, frankly, because I saw him. He had awful facial hair, if that's what makes him look like Boris Becker. A terrible little goatee beard. It was laughable. <laughs> I thought you. I don't know. And then she uh, goes. She goes to think, and she's like, "Yeah, I met him. We got chatting and stuff." You know. And I was, and she was going, "It's not often that. Um, it's not often that you meet someone. You know, generally in life, who's you know, kind of thoughtful and intelligent and funny." I thought to myself, "I'm not even going to waste my time with you, love." <laughs> Frankly, if that's what you thought of him. You just walked yeah. away. And I'll be honest with you, I didn't even bother talking to her. No, you were just I didn't above even waste it. my if, time with if her. If she really. thinks that bloke is not if only a great looking, was funny, but great funny looking. and intelligent, and she got on well, and he was polite, and it was a chance meeting, and he thought, and she, and she thought that you were like a freaky looking dork who didn't exactly. even have the nerve to if speak. That is what if that's she what she thinks, thinking, then she's I don't want to know her. I, I couldn't, I, you walked away, and good luck to you. And I have my dignity in Yes, and she's nothing. <laughs> Travis, flowers in the window on XFM 104.9. Well, coming to that time where we do White Van Man. Absolutely, with uh, producer Carl. And uh, Carl's gonna also going to be uh, telling us uh, his, uh, his slant on fables on Aesop. Absolutely. Um, I was out with Carl. I know I shouldn't be. Yeah, well, I, I broke the rule as well. I know. Well, I was out with him the night before, I think. And uh, we were just chatting. And um, as you know, uh, we're, uh, we're going to Edinburgh uh, for a week. Um, yeah, that's all three of us. That's all three yeah. of us, yeah. It wasn't, I just wondered for a minute there if there was some arrangement you two had made. Like next no. weekend, just popping up there seeing the sights. <laughs> yeah. No, we're going to do a, a week's broadcasting from the Edinburgh Festival. And, uh, you know, and Carl's going, I bet you lie in, don't you, and all this. And I was going, well, yeah. He's going, well, he wants to be up at half nine and out looking at the sights, you know what God. I mean? <laughs> yeah. But anyway, and I said, uh, have you ever had haggis? And he went, it's black pudding in it. I went, no, it's, uh, it's mints. He went, I like mints. I went, yeah, but wait, it's mints in a sheep stomach, right? And he went, what, they force feed a sheep, then kill it? <laughs> Imagine that, Carl. It makes sense, though, doesn't it? No, it doesn't make sense. Well, they force feed a sheep mints, and then kill it, till its stomach's nice and full, and they go, oh, this one's full, kill it, before it starts digesting it. Of course they don't. It's a membrane, they've... And the other one, he was talking about, like, um, he likes Richmond Park. He goes, I like to see all the deers. I went, it's deers, plural, you don't need to say. Deers. I try and educate whenever I can. What's that one? I said that deer is already yeah, deer is yeah. I said, you know, like sheep or, or fish. So you can't say fishes. And, uh, and, uh, we were laughing at us. I said, um, do you know the, um, plural of, uh, mongoose? Because a lot of people think it would be mongoose. It's not, it's mongooses. Do you know what Carl said? Plural of mongoose. Mongoose, yes. Plural of it's, mongoose? It's worth a competition. No, it's not. No. No, go on. Carl, what did you think the plural of mongoose was? Mongs. <laughs> <laughs> play a record after this white van, man. Do you want to play, uh... Oh, let's play a bit of Dylan, yeah. Ooh. Um, this is, this is a, 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 a beautiful track. Uh, it's, uh, uh, Just Like a Woman. <laughs> well, I think that's a beautiful record. 
Uh, it's by Bob Dylan, and it's just like a woman. And Carl went. He's got his headphones on, so he's speaking a bit loud. The harmonica's in, playing in, in, a, in a whiny mank accent when the harmonica's going. That's an annoying sound, Matt, isn't it? <laughs> <laughs> God. Oh, bless Bob him. Bob Dylan there. An annoying sound there. Did you Bob hear about... The annoying sound of Bob Dylan, like a <laughs> yeah. new album. Yeah, yeah. Just that sort of sound always reminds me of, um, a one-man band. Yeah. Have you heard the story about Leo Sayer with his song, One Man Band? No. Years ago. What, what year was, um... Oh, God. I'm in the mood for dancing? Uh, what's the song that he did about a one-man band? I'm a one-man band, it was called. Right, yeah. Funnily enough. Yeah, Go on. he did that, one-man band, and he was playing it at the Dominion Theatre. Yeah. And apparently, whenever he played, he, he sort of sang this song, he got the audience involved, and the line in it was, I'm a one-man band. One Nobody man knows or understands. Is there anybody there who can lend me a hand right. to my one-man band? He said that, and what he used to do, he used to reach out. Oh, and, yeah. And grab people's hands, and then he'd walk down the middle. <laughs> anyway, he said, won't anyone lend me a hand? He stuck his hand out, grabbed like a hand, and was walking down. Every lo everyone looked horrified, and some woman who had like a plastic hand it had come off. <laughs> and he was walking down the middle of like Dominion Theatre with his plastic hand in his hand. <laughs> and he said, "Oh, it's a moment I won't forget." <laughs> he knows how to tell a story, Leo Sayer. <laughs> <laughs> right, well, it's time oh. for White Van Man, which is where we ask Carl the questions that the son asks someone else. Exactly. It's um, an article in there where they ask them, you know, typical man on the street, the uh, the big questions of the day, uh, gives them their platform to the nation, and we think this is just too good to let out, because we, I mean, we only care about one person's opinion in the, in the, in the country now. That's true enough, he's the came man, and there he is. There he is, right. Carl, your thoughts, please, on... Kylie Minogue slagging off Britney Spears for ignoring her fans at her premiere. Are you aware of that story? No. She, uh, she got booed at her uh, premiere of her new film, Britney, because she uh, she left her fans waiting for like an hour. Some of them had travelled up from Bristol, other parts 3, of the country. Three thousand of them. Loads of them screaming for her. She just was, went straight into the theatre an hour late. Just gave them a quick wave and straight in. Didn't even and bother they were to shake their hands, and sign any off. So they were booing. What do you think of that, Carl? And Kylie's obviously said that was actually outrageous, you know, and uh, you should treat your fans with respect. What do you make of it? Um. So she did wave. Like. Yeah, but literally as she was walking into the theatre. <laughs> was it raining? No, I don't think it was. Uh, he's like a defence lawyer. Yeah. <laughs> but who hasn't really read the brief. <laughs> exactly. so he's like just me. winging it. Judge so first joke, was it raining? No. Ah, <laughs> oh, shit. I was relying on that. Uh, <laughs> um, was she hmm. running late for the start of the film? Yes, but that's her own fault. I mean, the people are inside. They're not going to start the film without her. It's Britney Spears. Yeah. She could take some time out. You know, when uh, Tom Cruise came here, he spent like an hour and a half shaking people's hands, talking to people on their mobile phones, all sorts. That's Tom Cruise. He's a bigger name than Britney. I know, but... He's a smaller like, person, but he's a bigger name. What, what <laughs> do people want from people? Do you know what I mean? Yeah, An point. autograph, things like that, a photo. This one's going nowhere, Steve. Is there okay. another one? Fair enough. <laughs> I'd, uh, yeah, I'd, I'd, you know, it's not bad. If she had more time, she might have done it. I bet she would have done it on another day. I mean, I'm not feeling too good today. I mean... <laughs> But you're going to still take time out to sign people's autographs, surely, when you leave the building. Yeah, there's always a bit of a crowd, isn't there? Next. Go on. Uh, what do you make of uh, a New York's, New York's ex-police chief saying we need more bobbies on the beat? He's come over here, he's the guy that sorted out crime in New York City. He's come over, he said, you're going all over the place here. Mm. You need more bobbies on the beat, not more policemen, more a visible police presence. There was, there was something last week about um, <laughs> some copper in London who was sat on a, sat on a bench. Yeah. Uh, and he was asleep or something. Oh, yeah. And people were like outraged because like he, he should be looking after you know England's people, not nodding off on a on a park bench, which is a bit daft. Because <laughs> they were shouting he should be looking after England's people. <laughs> yeah. well, he no, should be that, looking sorry, after England's was this people. The, was this the sixteenth century you went back to? <laughs> what do you mean he should, he should be looking after England's people? You know, wherever he was, if he was in like a park somewhere, yeah, they were, like they were like really annoyed because he was asleep. But sure, he'd probably be undercover. It, if it, well, no, but the thing is, if there would have been any trouble, I'm sure he would have woke up. Yeah. If there was any sort of, if someone needed help mm. and he screamed, he would have woke up. So I don't know why they were having a go at him. Yeah, and, and he might not, he might not have been there at all. So you know, it was, you know, so yeah. he would probably have his radio turned on, didn't he? Yeah, listening to Heart. So you're not concerned then that there's not that the, the crime's going I up? I think there's enough. I see quite a lot of them whizzing around. Okay, you're, you're yeah. happy then? Yeah. As long as you're happy, Carl. So you don't think it's too much crime? No. Just the right amount. Just the right amount of crime. Yeah. What yeah. about the fact that uh, new gambling laws give Blackpool the green light to become a British Las Vegas? What do you make of that? Are you a gambler? A little bit. When I, when I go on holiday, I like going in the arcade and having a little flutter. Sure. 
Um, What's your favourite? I have to go on the, you know, the fruit machines. Yeah. There's a good one called The Simpsons. <laughs> right. Is that um, your favourite? Yeah, it's quite good. Is that a tie-in with the TV show The Simpsons? Yeah. Okay. Um, will they make Blackpill the next Vegas? I don't think so. No, nor Can't do I. Can't see it happening. No. You've been to Blackpool? Yeah. What was it? Was it it's, a, it's a bit rank. Is it? It is a bit rough. Okay. Needs, a, needs a lot of work doing on it. Yeah. Uh, no, that won't happen. Okay. And you're not worried about this encouraging gambling, generally? You, you, gambling's not a vice you're concerned about? Uh, if you're a gambler, you, you're a gambler. Do you know what I mean? If, yeah. if Blackpool isn't done up, they'll go somewhere else to have a flutter. Sure. So it's not going to make any difference. Okay. No. Okay, it's really good. Uh, what do you make of the So Solid crew's Ashley Walters being jailed for 18 months? Obviously not a very good example to uh, his young fans. He should have got more. Do you think? I had a dream about him the other night. Go on. About about the group itself. Okay. I had a dream that... Were they all there? Because there's yeah, a lot of them. I, c- I couldn't remember all their faces. <laughs> the um, feature in a dream. I had a t-shirt on. <laughs> he had etc. <laughs> exactly, yeah. Two of them, had etc, yeah. I had a t-shirt on. You had a t-shirt on. Yeah, and it said on my t-shirt, so solid poo. And I was walking down the street and they came towards me. Wow. Just about to beat that's me off a great dream. That's amazing. That's an amazing I love dream. that. That's, we've, all had, 30 year old. we've all had that anxiety dream. <laughs> oh my goodness. What oh if no. I meet the So Solid crew and I'm wearing oh a t shirt that slags them off? Oh, I don't believe it. Yeah. You know, yeah. So what happened? Did you get beaten up in the I, It was one of them where I woke up. Do you know, I've been telling you that I keep getting them things where you, you feel like you're falling. Oh, yeah. yeah. It was the same sort of thing. It's you like, know, I'm not a real psychiatrist, so <laughs> you should. You know no, what I mean? You, you do know a lot about a lot. Yeah, I do, thanks very much. And, you know, if I'm at home talking to Suzanne about something and, and I don't know the answer, I think, right, I'll ask Ricky that one yeah. soon. Yeah. yeah, thanks. But you know that, th- I think you might mention before, that apparently if you uh, die in a dream, it means that you're dying in real life. Yeah, yeah, well, that's it, if you don't... But apparently um, if you get beaten up by the So Solid crew <laughs> in a dream, it means you're being beaten up by them in real life. <laughs> yeah, that is true. So you probably work a lot, a lot of people have been joking. Face. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Terrifying. <laughs> Absolutely terrifying. So, yeah, lock him up for longer. Okay. okay. Finally, what do you make of uh, Halle Berry becoming the first black woman to win the oh, Best oh, Actress Oscar? Did you see her speech? Oh, got on my nerves. Did it? I mean, you know, it's good that she won. You know, it's nice for anyone to win an award. Yeah. But she did go on a bit. And, you know, I've, I've been in that same sort of position. What? <laughs> Placing an Oscar? <laughs> well, I got, um... It, what they used to do at school is, uh... <laughs> okay. If you did a full month without being off, you got a gold certificate. <laughs> okay. And I did a month once without having a day off. And sure. I went up, and I didn't, I didn't do it, make a fuss. <laughs> you didn't start crying. <laughs> Can't play a record, mate. Well done, though. Good Were you the there. first kid in your school to do that? I don't think anyone else got the certificate. It was only because I was never in. They tried to encourage me. To <laughs> it was just for you. <laughs> they mounted an entire the ceremony the just to encourage board. you. <laughs> Wise words there from Bella Sebastian <laughs> on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais, with me Steve Match. Nice, Steve. Well, I mean, it is indeed wise words, Rick. I'm worried that people are going to get out of the office now and into the sunshine and not be listening to the show. There's always the transistor radio. <laughs> That's true enough. Um, indeed, any to the part, take well, it along. It is time. Keep it low, though. Don't want to irritate other people. No, I know. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, and if, if you do want to irritate them, spit on them. It's better. <laughs> exactly. Um, and kick them and throw little rocks. <laughs> exactly. With me, Carl, Kamer and Pilkington, we are now... We're into this, wh- way into the second month of the education of Carl. As you know, Carl got one GCSE in history, and E, and uh, we've been uh, we've been cramming, haven't we? Oh, really? Uh, before you mention that, can I on. just say something? Um, obviously, we do always do this thing with the Sun, uh, White Van Man, where we read this thing out from the Sun and query uh, Carl. And I was out with some friends last night, and my friend Dan always listens to the show, and he said, um, Carl, you, you know, you, I love the bit when you, you answer the questions in the, in the Sun. Why do you have, do you ever know what the questions are before they're asked, or is that your first answer? And uh, Carl said, No, that is it. They don't let me see what the questions are first. They don't show them to me, and I always get re- always get really anxious and really get really paranoid. And I was just wondering, have you seen the error there, Carl? Have you seen the mistake you've been making? Right? You're you worried that say? you're worried that you didn't get the questions beforehand, right? Yeah. What? Well, how could you? How, how could, could you, you maybe combat that? Do you think? How, how could you combat that if you're really nervous? Uh, you know, coming maybe you to wanted work. to sort of have some views or ideas well, beforehand. It's 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 your error, isn't it? Do you know what I mean? It's your show. If uh, if you want to like take a chance with me. No, 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 so his point is this, that if you're really worried about that, how could you, how could you get hold of those questions in advance? Is there any way you could get hold of those questions in advance? Yeah, but is it always in, in today's? <laughs> is it always in Saturdays? Yes. So they don't do that every day of the week? They do, but I always take it from this Saturday. Right, well, yeah, I could, but that would cost me money. I'm not on enough as it is, working sure. here on Saturday. <laughs> okay. How much is the sun? 30p. Yeah, well... <laughs> 
<laughs> You're not made of money. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. yeah. Actually, um, it's 40p on a Saturday. I don't know what I was thinking. Well, you were studying Aesop's fables, weren't you, this week? Now, mm. now I, I'm, I'm going to very, be very liberal here and let you talk about it. I'm not, it's not, not a test. I'm not, hey, man, just, like, chill out. I'm not this, like, rigid sort of, you know, uh, boxing society. Just just tell us your views. Just tell us your vibe on Aesop. Tell us something. What have you learned from these fables? He uh, made a bit of money out of something that's quite simple. Uh, yeah, I don't know if he did make any money out of it. I mean, it, it, you know, I think it was published, like, thousands of years after his death, but go on. Yeah, they're just, just little stories. I mean, uh, enjoyed them. Yeah. But didn't learn anything from them. Okay. Or, did, or did you, you see? Because it's teaching through sort of like metaphor and analogy, and maybe it, it all seeps in and it's all subliminal, and maybe in a way your, no, your subconscious is teaching you. No, it's silly. It's silly. If, 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 if the stories were done in like a real way, that there's like a, a man and a woman, and, and it's a little story that's may happen to them in life, then you learn something. But it's all about, you know, a gorilla and a fox uh, are walking through the woods. How often does that happen? <laughs> Sure. So you're Good saying point. if it was more like kind of if it was more true to life, if it was more like, maybe, if it was more like yours. real yeah. stories, like you know, a kid on his grifter and a, a magpie picking it, you know, pecking at his head, or yeah. two frog boys <laughs> with webbed hands. I mean, if it was real stories from real life that people could believe, yeah, that actually that happened. Maybe you know, it, it would teach us something. But why not do that? Like take a real situation, say like the So Solid Crew guy, yes, going down for carrying a gun. Use that in some way. Do you know what I mean? As a warning, maybe about carrying guns. What about something yeah. like if you carry guns and that is illegal, do you you could have some sort of punishment. Yeah, that's, that's good. good. So, yeah. so it, it mean, doesn't yeah. bother you then that the fact that these fables have been used for many many generations to educate maybe young children or even older people, the fact that they've served a brilliant function and they've become classics, that doesn't bother you. You've seen through them. Well, they don't always work. Okay. Uh, when I was out with Rick the other day, he brought one up. Oh, I told him the one about the, uh, the 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 two mice, the industrious mouse who. Um, throughout the summer, he would be storing berries, nuts and berries, and he'd be storing it, and the other ones would just be eating off the trees and running around and having a laugh. And they go, well, you're going to become hungry. And they'd go, oh, I'll worry about that when it comes to it. And they'd do that, and he'd be storing his nuts and berries, and the autumn came, and the mouse was still playing and not doing anything. And then winter came, and the, and the silly mouse was, like, shivering. And he went and knocked on the, the mouse's door and went, I'm freezing and I'm starving. And the, and the clever mouse said, well, I told you, didn't I? You know, you should have been storing your nuts through winter like I did. Come in and share mine. You know, and uh, what did you say, Carl? Well, and the moral of that is whatever. Well, uh, 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 yeah, you know, sort of, uh, you know, just be careful. Uh, but my thing is that, that it's not very good because the moral of that is do what you want, and there's always a, a, a do good or a chair there. Yeah, so, right, right, sure. yeah. But um, but the way I, w you know, I think which is more sort of 2002. <laughs> the ending should have been, uh, you know, the guy with all the berries <laughs> should have like been like, yeah, no, I'll be all right come the winter. I've got loads of food. I'll be safe. But then, as he's going into his little hut at the beginning of the winter, some sort of bus or something comes and kills him. Right. And it's like... You should have parted hard, because yeah, you might die. Yeah. Enjoy life whilst you've got it. Yeah. Okay, and if winter comes, just starve to death. <laughs> well, you know, worry about tomorrow tomorrow. Okay. Okay. Yeah. See, I'm wondering fables. if there's a new book here. I really am worried, <laughs> wondering if there's a Carl's so, like, Fables. He's, he's been coming out with the sum all week. He keeps going, well, that's a fable, isn't it? Yeah. So what's your favourite fable in there? Have you learned anything from this book? Uh, to get, you know, is there one fable you liked? Yeah, I mean, they're all, like? they're all all right. What did you like? Uh, you're throwing it on me now, there. Didn't you like one about a crab, you said? No, that was the one about messing about on a cliff edge or something. Don't what? mess about on a cliff edge. <laughs> <laughs> what was that? I don't know. I, well, there's not many around here, so I didn't take much interest in that one. <laughs> <laughs> you know what I mean? God. Um, I'm doing my best here. I'm you dying. don't remember yeah, any yeah, of them. Yeah, here's one that was quite nice. Uh, there was a belly, you know, like your stomach. Yeah. And, uh... And it's this belly on a pair of legs, and the legs were saying, "I'm more important than you because I I carry I carry you around," and the belly said, "Yeah, but you know, if it weren't for me, holding all this food, you wouldn't have the energy to walk around here." Yeah. And that means like, you know, rather than working on your own, it's best to work in a team. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. <laughs> so, Good. well, the one the one similar to that I was taught when I was little was um. Um, a vision of uh, heaven and hell, and uh, in it went down to hell, and in hell, right, there was these you know, people had like twenty foot long um, chopsticks, yeah, and they they were getting their food, and they would they couldn't get the chopsticks into the food and get it round their mouth because they were just too long, right, right, and that was hell. And in heaven, they had exactly the same thing, 
but they were feeding each other. What? Uh, you don't like Chinese food? Is that what you're concerned? <laughs> <laughs> Is that what you're concerned, he's got? No, I'm just... <laughs> my, see, my... The one I remember, and I, I can't remember the ending, uh, it's about two nuns in a bath. Yeah, oh, I know. I can't yeah. remember what it is. Yeah, that's that it, yeah. Or is it, are they on a bike? No, they're, 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 that's two adventures. It's the same nuns, <laughs> it's but it's they go to all sorts of adventures. They, they're they, normally they, quite erotic adventures. Yeah, well, they are, but there was one when they're driving down a cobbled street, I remember. <laughs> oh, God, God. And then there's the other... Then, of course, they get... Whale Bones on XFM 104.9. I'm Ricky Gervais with me, Steve Merchant Hello and there. Carl. Well, um, Carl, I, I really don't think you got your teeth into the fables, really. I don't think you... There wasn't anything to learn. I read a couple, thought, yeah, that's all right, and put it down again. There wasn't anything to learn. It was all stuff I knew already, <laughs> but made up with nice little foxes and bears and stuff. So... Yeah. But is that, that one about, like... That's one we spoke about, like, uh, when the hares are going, we should share all our food. And the lion said, that's a good argument, but you haven't got, it hasn't got the teeth and claws that we've got. That's lovely. Because it's sort of like, you know, that's an in indictment on mm. sort of, you know, you could say it's an anti-equality almost. You know, you could get really sort of deep into that. You, you know what I mean? You could, no? Big oh, philosophical I'm ideas in a nutshell. Not interesting? No, not really. Um, okay. Okay, then, well, th you're going to hate this, then. I've brought in the concise Oxford Dictionary of Quotations. Now, just look at some of your favourites. I suggest going to straight to things like um, Wilde or uh, Newton or Churchill or um You're a big Keats. fan of Churchill. Churchill. Yeah, yeah. Like oh, well, he's, he's, he's the boy. Yeah, right, well, okay, let's uh, go through that old Kramer. Blah, blah. Newton, right. Um, right, here's a famous one, okay? This is Isaac Newton. If I have seen further... It is by standing on the shoulders of giants. Do you like that one? So there's a meaning in it. Yeah. Yeah. Well, he hasn't actually stood on the shoulders of giants. So he's. So remember, he's a he's a, an amazing uh, uh, inventor and mathematician, and he discovered the incredible uh, laws of the universe. And and he's saying, yeah. If, okay. You, if you want a good view, <laughs> move into a multi-story. <laughs> he's saying, right? He's saying, if I've seen, if I have seen further the people, and he's being modest here, it's because I've stood on the shoulders of giants to get that view. If it weren't for all the people that have come before him with their great insight and knowledge, he wouldn't have seen what he's seen. He's ta taken his learning, isn't he? Those people have given well, him. I just a say that. Instead of making up, it's, that, that's what I've got a problem with. People don't <laughs> poetry, say what they mean. Poetry, art, and in yeah. life though, people never say what they actually mean, and you know, there's loads of books on it. I don't know. But but the point is that he's he's just summarised quite a tricky idea beautifully. It's in beautiful. That, 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 that's, that, that gets into you much deeper than just the words, than just the literal words, you know what I mean? One it, of my favourites is from an American novelist, and the quote is, talking about the subject of fame and being famous, yeah. fame is a mask that eats into the face. Don't you think that's amazing? Meaning... Well, meaning that the fame, that fame is something that is artificial, that you wear initially, you become famous, but it's, it's, it's ethereal, it's nothing, it's intangible, it's just an artifice. But if you stay famous long enough, you begin to think that that mask you're wearing is really your real face. So that you begin to, you know, think that you are more than, than you perhaps are. Do you see what I mean? In the way that fame and power can corrupt. And who said that? No, it's an American novelist, I forget his name. Yeah, it's alright, yeah, it's something like that. Yeah. What's, what, okay. what, what, uh, pick another one. Right. Yeah, let's have a look. Um, oh, Bernard Shaw, he's no slouch. I let's think maybe when you read, when you take this book of quotations home, Carl, you should maybe just draw up maybe a list of three or four of your favourites yeah, like, and, and tell Shaw, them next week. I want to do Shaw, um, Wild, uh, I look at Shakespeare as well, you know, he's... Uh, yeah. what, you, are you a fan of Shakespeare? No. Go on, what's your, what's your problem with it? Just, um, the way they speak. Can't, sure. I can't follow it. Yeah. Yeah. And Do you like West Side Story? It's, it's really old as well. I can't relate to it. It's, it's like years and years ago, isn't it? That's why I like Churchill, because 1940s. Yeah. Not Look at ago. this. Look at this. This is to sure. Okay. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Uh, again, uh, how would you see that in your little? Well, that's your. That's one homework. Then I'll mark that. That's your homework. You've got to work that out. You've got to tell me what you think of it. So, say again? Don't ask Suzanne. It's there. All right, all right. There are two tragedies in life. One is not to get your heart's desire. The other is to get it. Okay? Take that home with you. 
and we'll be um, hearing Carl come up with some amazing quotations next week. Yeah, pick out your favourites. Now I'd like to uh, play a song for the lovers while he's thinking. No, I don't think we've got the lovers lined up. Oh, what have we got? A bit of hip hop. It's hip hop hooray. Oh, is it? Yeah, everyone's a big fan. Uh, I played something from this last week. It's uh, this new album from Nerd, In Search Of. It's been uh, re recorded by the lads, I don't know why. <laughs> and um, anyway, it's particularly good. We played last week, Things Are Getting Better. This is the one we have played in the past, actually. Bobby James. <laughs> Doves, there goes the fear on XFM 104.9. Well, just read that book anyway. I'll just, I'll just, can I just say, it? Uh, th this is one of a, a beautiful, is Keats, right? Um, what do you think of this? A thing of beauty is a joy forever. Its loveliness increases. It will never pass into nothingness. See, this, this is just like how it was at school now. I've, I, the last couple of weeks have been quite interested in what you've been giving me. Now it's, it's really like... Okay. I really don't care. Now this. Th what about this? Now no, I, I, not, I, I, not, not I did philosophy, and philosophy is obviously the, you know, the quest for knowledge. And it's, you know, it's a. Look, listen to this though. This is what Keats came out with. Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. Isn't that beautiful? Yeah. Don't be constrained by what's, you know, dream a little. You know what I mean? Just go beyond. I don't agree with it, but it's a lovely, it's a lovely bit of poetry. Yes. Yeah. So you're going to read that for me, are you, Carl? Yeah. Yeah. Just pick out five of your favourites. Yeah. The ones that mean something to you. And then ne next week I'll bring you in pictures of animals. Brilliant. Okay? Yeah, we'll do it. Okay, and some sweets. <laughs> Rick, um, I've had a word with some of the uh, the top brass here. Or they had a word with me in the corridor. If you remember Did when they we started... Did they say, what, who are you? <laughs> Pretty much, yeah. yeah. <laughs> Oi, four eyes. <laughs> um, yeah. And, uh, no, they said they were saying that, you know, obviously enjoy the show, they love it. And, um... They're just worried, though, that in the early days when we started the show, remember, we were a lot more informative. We used to do the film reviews, yeah. those, things like the gig guide and stuff sure, like sure, that. Sure, 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 Which we've kind of let yeah, go by the thing about the way, sorry. The, yeah, so, they want us to bring that. Well, no. exactly. So I just no, 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 the gig guide. I was worried that, funnily enough, the XFM gig guide, it, it, gig guide does not include some of the biggest bands in the world. Okay, all right. Or, or some of the best venues. That's what worried me. No, look, Rick, but, just do what you're told, right? Oh, there's, the gig, there's the gig guide. It's got, got big, it's got a lot of big names impressed? on it. You're going to love the gig guide. I need a bet. If this is going to be pretty no, impressive. Let's, do the, let's play the proper jingle. Okay. Okay. Ah, tonight, uh, if you want to... Oh, hey. If you want to see these two bands in a small venue, get down to the Metro Bar on Oxford Street. Doors are at 8pm and tickets are only six quid to see Ten Benson and Beach Buggy. Ah, ah, All right? Now, if you missed Long Wave supporting the Strokes at Brixton Academy last night, you can catch them headlining Casino Royale at the Monarch. Rick, yeah. I missed them last night. How much will I be paying for that? You'll only be paying five pounds, right? But listen, they're also supported by Shelby and I Remember Nothing. <laughs> Brilliant. Now... Now, people know about the Rixton Academy, but a little-known uh, venue in Rixton is the Windmill. <laughs> okay. you, you're going to see three great bands there tonight. Guapo, <laughs> okay. Plonkez, and Mechanical Beatles Never Quite Warm. <laughs> so, uh, Orange Goblin and Grand Magus play the garage. And, uh, well, it, the Diffin... What's it? Diefenbach and Sudden play the Rotar Sessions at Nine Hills Arts Club. So that's the gig guy, the next <laughs> film. What a load of rubbish. <laughs> I mean, st switch off the jingle. Look at this. Yeah. We've discussed this before, haven't we? Names for bands that will never be anything. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, please welcome to the stage Mechanical Beatles, Never Quite Warm. <laughs> please welcome to oh. the stage Planquev. <laughs> please welcome oh. to the stage Orange Goblin. <laughs> Oh, goodness me. Look oh, at this. Oh, God. Orange Goblin. Uh, Orange Goblin. <laughs> so what's rubbish. His, what's his name? Uh, um, got a fake town, hasn't he? That one of his mark, come, uh, supermarket sweep. What's his name? Dale. Dale Winton. Dale Winton, yeah. Supporting R.E.M. I remember nothing. <laughs> Never gonna happen. <laughs> Just, I mean, please. Come on, people. Think. Hey, here's a band that plays big venues. Doesn't make them better, sure. But this is Radiohead, this is uh, Song for the Lovers, and Let Down, off OK Computer. This is beautiful. So, see, a thing of beauty is a joy forever. Does, doesn't that move you at all, Carl? <laughs> Philosophy will clip an angel's wings. There was an old lady from Ealing <laughs> who was put into... Radiohead. Let down off OK Computer. Apparently we missed a, we missed a gig on that gig guide. Uh, Drip Feed are playing the Rock Garden on the 21st of this month. Excellent. So uh, the lead singer just called in cool. for that. He also uh, left a quote with me. Uh, apparently uh, uh, Coleridge said of Keats, wasn't it? 
he's uh, like an archangel, slightly damaged. Rick, See, I'm worried we're getting a little bit highbrow. Do you reckon? Have you got any knob gags you could do quickly? Because I'm just thinking we're switching. There's a lot of people who are going to be turning off. Um, I uh, mean, currently, currently on Capital FM, Chris Tarrant and Dr. Neil Fox together at last. The partnership at last, we've always they wanted. said it would never happen. Do you know I'd like to see together? Uh, that breakfast DJ, Sarah Cox, and who's the the uh, dance? Just, um, Carl. Carl. Uh, Carl, Carl uh, Cox. Carl, please, why are you getting, you're suddenly saying these rude words? We've been reprimanded yeah, once, don't Carl, say please. That, and don't say it so aggressively, because it sounds like you're saying cocks aggressively. Come on, we've been reprimanded. Yeah. All right? That, just don't use language like that. It's annoying me. On. Why is it annoying you? Because We're talking about DJs, that's yeah. their names. Well, you, you try to be clever. I, I hardly think that's clever. You've given me a little... <laughs> yeah, if that's my best attempt at being clever. I've got rubbish homework this week. Okay, he's really upset he's about really this. Upset. He was looking forward to st uh, an uh, animal fat. You said what? you were going to bring in that big book, five hundred. It's animal so. It, I got it off one of those bargain books. Oh, I thought it'd be easy, right? Because it's it's but it's too elementary. No, but that's more useful than that to me. But it's things like it's things like the tortoise has a shell to protect it. That's good. <laughs> yeah, but you know, because you thought it was there just to be painted on. <laughs> 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 oh, have you ever have you ever peeled a tortoise? They fly. They go about four hundred miles an hour. It's to weigh them down because they're the fastest lizards known to man. <laughs> exactly. Honestly, they run so fast they can go through walls. Yeah, and so that they. That, that their shells put on them in the hospital, in the maternity ward, at a very early age, just slow them down. You let a tortoise out uh, a shell and you won't catch it. Steve, do you know that turtles can breathe out of the bum? Turtles can breathe out of their bum? I know someone who can talk out of it, but <laughs> didn't realise that. That's, uh, that <laughs> Where do, well, tell us about that. Tell us about that. How that, do they do that? It, that's all I know. They get, when they go swimming, they can sort of, uh, <laughs> if they don't want to get their, stick their head out, they can just... <laughs> stick their arse out. Yeah. Why, why don't they want to stick their head out? I don't know. Just uh, if... I, I don't know, maybe they don't need... They need to be looking for food under the water. Yeah. So, and if they stick their head up to get some air, they might miss something. Wouldn't it be easier to have an arse that could, um, forage for food? So they could sort of, like, lounge in the pool, like a jacuzzi, and they're looking around going, All right, hello, <laughs> hiya! And meanwhile, it's arse is, like, munching grass. Yeah, bad Wouldn't breath. that be easier? Bad, bad breath. <laughs> <laughs> well, I wish I understood what that meant. Um, yeah. In all this it's hilarity, like a quote, isn't it? But in all that hi I this hilarity, I'm worried we've um, forgotten the true meaning of Easter. Uh, <laughs> no, come on, Rick, come on, oh, come on. You're just, you know, you're being frothy and lightweight and a little bit rude. But you yeah. know, it is. It's a time for remembering and chocolate that um, someone did die for their our sins. Yeah. So can we just be, be ashamed to disappoint him? Yeah. Can we just think about that and just take a moment just to consider that? Yeah, can we do that? All right. Yeah. Okay? Yeah. You understand the true meaning of Easter. It's not just about eggs and bunnies. You no, understand no, no. it, don't you? Yeah. What's your memory of it? What's your understanding of it, Carl? So what Easter. You, what's it all about for you? What do you have to do at school? Do you have to do anything at school? Uh, I think we got a long weekend off. <laughs> okay. Really? <laughs> yeah. What did they call that weekend? Easter weekend. Brilliant. Okay. And what was the reason for that? What, why did we have Easter weekend off? Jesus. Yeah. But what did he do? He, uh, he put himself on the cross. Yeah. yeah. Well. Well, he didn't put himself on no. that. Does it mean anything to you? Are you moved by that story? Again, too long ago for me to sort of... <laughs> okay. Um, you know, <laughs> to worry about. To it. Sure. Yeah. I mean, if there'd have been an Anderson shout were involved... Yeah. You'd have been... You'd have been there, wouldn't you? You're not well today, are you, Carl? Not at all. Don't know no. what's wrong with me today. I've, I've got a bit of a temperature. Have you? Do you know Steve, uh... Like, you know, he's always on the go at me. Last night when we were out with his mates, yeah. they said he was a bit of a hypochondriac to himself. Did they? Yeah. What did they say? What were they saying? He said, uh, they said, I said, Steve's told me he's not feeling well. Is, you know, is he all right? you live with him? He said, oh, I don't worry about that. Really? So he's always saying that, and I said, that's a bit of a fable. I said, cry wolf. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, one day he say, I've got a temperature, and they go, oh, I've had the lemsip, and he'll die. Yeah. yeah. Well, I've learnt my lesson. Yeah. There the, was one about cry, the boy cried wolf. It, the, uh, the moral can surely only be never tell the same lie twice. You know what I mean? Because if he'd have like, come up with a different one, he'd have kept them going all year, I reckon. That's a good point. Yeah. I never thought of it like that before. What are we going to play? A final tune. Have we, what, we got, we got, we got a bit of suede, haven't we? Well, it depends. Let's get a bit of suede in and song for the ladies. Let's go over. You can't What's the, what is it? Is it's, only the football, it's only the football. Don't say that. 
Yeah, I'll give us your song. What's the football? What's the match? What's this? A lot of, uh, the gig guide oh. is Long Wave and Guapo and Plankos. What's this? What was the football match? Oh. Talk, what are the football matches XFM covering? I don't know. What, what Come song on. would you like? Track, track, track eight. Is it Bolton versus Barnsley? <laughs> you don't like sport though, do you? A lot well, of people who do. Huh? A lot of people who do. All right, track eight, what are we going for then? Uh, we're going for, uh, it's a bit of Stevie Wonder. Yeah. And uh, I think it's quite a short song though, Carly. Are you, gonna, are you sure? No, that's cool, yes. Yeah, it's it's cool. okay. You're okay, are you? Yeah, yeah. So this is the final song. Is this it? lost a lot of energy, this show. This is it. I mean, the first hour and 40 minutes, I think, was dynamite. I think the last 10 have been uh, but flagging. But I Carl, he was, he was full of life. You know, he was answering the questions and stuff, and now you've and lost he got, it. And he got, got fed up, he got fed up with the quotations. He didn't like us mentioning.